Guys, just a little bit of an update. Um, I'll be going to the Philippines in the very, very near future. Um, April's mother's visa has been sorted and approved, all gone through. And the Spanish embassy was much easier to deal with than um, the Philippines government has been. <laughs> The bizarre, I mean, I say it's bizarre, it's not. I mean, I'm trying not to be too political on this, but you do find that the Filipinos that work at these embassies are obviously more difficult than the actual embassy officials. Now, I said to April, I understand some of this because I'm the same in business. Um, for example, if I send somebody to do a certain task, like let, let's just say in the embassy, somebody, somebody's been asked to go in, make sure that when somebody comes in, they fill in this form, they've got this bit, they've took the photo, done that, got all the documents, and then it comes to my desk. If half of it's missing or whatever, I go downstairs and say, why have you sent this up to me? You haven't done your job. You have one simple job, make sure all the documents are in the right order, got all the right information, da da da, because I've got about 40 of these to do today. That's why these people can be quite awkward to deal with because they are getting people like myself that would sit up at the next level going, why are you sending this to me? You get one job, making sure the documents are right and you're not doing it. Do you need to replace you? You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do take that into account. Why, what does bug me is when the people that were complaining about the birth certificate then put a spelling mistake in the passport so how all has to be done again. Um, which is the Philippines government itself. But we're through all this now. We're now at the next stage, which is flying, picking picking April's mother up, bringing her over to Spain on holiday, and I'll be roaming around in the Philippines for a little while. Um, we'll see how it goes. I've got a few a few meetings lined up, but I'm not confirming anything on a video yet. Mainly because until I get to the Philippines and find out who's available and when, um, I can't confirm they're going to be available at the times I need to meet up with them. But we're definitely going to have some interesting video footage and some photos. Now, this gets me onto the microphone. If any, somebody mentioned yesterday that the mic is much, much better. It's, this is the beast here. It's a Yeti mic. Uh, very, very good quality. They're not cheap. Uh, I think this one's don't know, a couple of, two, 230 euros or something. Um, there's different versions of them. I do recommend if you're buying one, have a look at the different versions and do a comparison to what you need. Um, but they seem to be one of, or if not the uh, podcaster mic that a lot of people are using. Um, as you probably noticed, I've moved the desk and everything around as well now in here. Partly because um, I, th I think we've got more space, but also I took my rug out because <laughs> there was, I've got a, this big rug that's the size of a carpet um, and we took it out, give it a good wash and everything because it's been, been here in the other house for what's that, we've had it a couple of years now, so about time it had a deep clean, um, so that's outside drying at the minute. Um, so what else have we got going on? Um, you may not be aware of this, but if you have your medical insurance in Spain, um, I haven't got my medical card here, April's got it, it covers me for foreign travel as well, um, up to, I think it's 15,000 euros um, medical cover. So that's, that's useful as well, because uh, I already have the medical cover I pay monthly anyway, so it's not like I had to get extra medical insurance, I've got full cover. Uh, what else have I got to mention this week? Yeah, microphone-wise, I'll be taking the these this little guy to the Philippines, which now means I have to test him before I head to the Philippines to check it works with my new phone. This this little guy here is um, one of the rodeo mics, and it's very very good quality and you'll find that you don't get a lot of wind noise with it as well so that's another mic i do recommend this one's about 120 130 dollars uh that's quite good this little guy here is something else i recommend which will give you your wider lens you just clip that over your 
mobile phone and it does work quite well. Um, one of the things I will recommend doing, which is something I'm going to sort out as well, is that when I'm out and about doing videos and photos, have somebody cover your back. Um, I got caught out here in Tarveca actually. I got pickpocketed by Romanians um, because I was taking photos in the market and I wasn't expecting somebody to use a child um, use the child to pickpocket me uh, but you live and learn yeah what they do is get a push chair and they're banging your, your like your right leg so you, you're looking from the right the kids pickpocketing your left left pocket because that's where your money is um, but you live and learn it was just one of those annoying things where I wouldn't normally have my wallet on me uh, but I'd taken it because I was out all day but Hindsight's a good thing. I learned my lesson. Very rarely do, do I get caught out with something like that, but it happens to us all. And this little guy's going as well, which is something I did buy for the Philippines. A lot of the videos recently, um, when I'm not sitting exactly like this, and you may actually see the computer screen with this, so you can get the audio on this. It's, it's not the best screen-wise, but it's waterproof for five meters, which means, there you go, it's quad proof, as a classic, it's dust proof, etc., etc., which means it's ideal for the Philippines. It, it's shock proof, I can drop it on the floor, but I'm not going to as well. Um, but I'll be doing a lot of footage with this as well. So that's, that's another tool in my arsenal. And so if you see a lot of video footage that's from the camcorder, it'll be this, which is an Everio R. Um, so, yeah, and I'm just considering should I take my my MacBook with me, and uh, not my my Mac Air because I could do with my laptop with me. Well, think about that because I've got a call center in the Philippines. So there's 45 computers sat in it. I don't need to take a computer. This is what I'm thinking. Do I need to take a computer or not? Um, but it may actually be useful for things like Dropbox and stuff, so I can sync stuff straight to the network. Because one of the things I do have is anything I upload in any of these, because this is set up for Wi-Fi as well. When it gets a Wi-Fi connection, it starts uploading everything. And I have a cloud where all this stuff just goes zoop, as soon as it gets internet access and it offloads it. Downside is when you've been out with the kids and everything all day and all the phones and everything's been used. You get home and there's like, the internet's not moving. It's because everything's uploading and then downloading. Because obviously it goes out of there, loops back through things like Dropbox. So we're getting uploaded to cloud onto Dropbox and coming back down to my computer. So it just swamps the internet for the next four hours or whatever, depending on how much we've been doing. But yeah, pretty much all set for that. One of the things I will say, Torbeck is a pig to get to the bloody Philippines from. Uh, everything seems to either go Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, uh, London, and trying to get the best connections because when I say Barcelona it may there's a problem with the luggage for example there's 35 euros for the luggage but here's a bit of thought the bus is 35 euros so the cost of flight plus luggage to go to Barcelona or Madrid you may actually be better off just getting on the bus and going to sleep for six hours and save yourself the money because the because you've got 35 plus flight cost where in the bus it's just 35 euros each way. A little bit frustrating, especially when you know the flights, because that, that's, that's, that's the cost of a flight to London. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're just doing the last bit, the logistics at the moment, to get to an international hub, to get us out of Europe and into Asia. Yeah, but I'm excited to see, see how the Philippines has been developing while I've been away. Um, one of the things I am also doing, which I'm not taking this one. This is, this book I actually like. This is um, this one's color coded, and I'm not showing you what's in here because there's all sorts in here that I can't share. There's low the front half I use for notes and a bit of a diary, but at the back there's there's other stuff related to codes and things and passwords and things. But I always recommend taking a book and it's another one. I've got to find another book with nothing that's got any passwords or anything in it. So like here, you can see I've been working 
through tutorials on trading. This is this is what this is. It's actually explaining. Um, we can see that it's how the the bars work on trading and identifying the bars because what what you have with trading if it's green it means it started here and gone up but you may have some tails top and end which means when it when it started it's gone down gone back to where it started and then gone up and then gone further then back down and that's why you end up with the tails when the but I'm going to get into explaining all the crypto trading as well when I get back. Um, right now, I'm going to switch off from the crypto for a little bit and focus on this trip. It's also going to tie in with the power plant stuff as well because I'm going to go and have a look at some of the rivers and stuff and the state of them. So I can actually show what we're looking at fixing at the Philippines because the same information can be relayed in many, many other parts of the world. Um, this is why it's going to be quite an interesting trip um, because it's not just pick April's mother up hope to meet several uh, key people along with doing some of the the localized stuff doing some videos and stuff I've never done before because a lot of stuff my older stuff is actually on photos you know because it was all pre pre video <laughs> um, which just remind me I might get my GoPro out as well GoPros out there. I'm not taking the drones, but I might take the GoPros. I've got, I've got a gimbal as well for that, so that might be going. I'm just wondering if I can get the batteries on the flight. That's the only thing. I might think I'm trying to blow something up. Um, but yeah, I'll take the gimbal. I've got to charge all this because it's it's all been rushed now. Because initially we're like, oh, we'll do it in the next couple of days, and now it looks like I might be flying tonight. Because if I go to Madrid, I've got to get on the, get on the um, bus at midnight to be in Madrid for the flight in the morning. And then I should be in the Philippines within the next 48 hours. What a bit weird. Because it was only, I think, Friday that we were aware that everything's been approved. So I'm happy. I've got to admit, I'm happy. I'm happy for my mother-in-law. I know she's stressing a little bit at the minute because ultimately she's looking at going to a new country, never been on an international flight. Um, not sure what to expect, not sure um, the long flights and all this sort of stuff, but looking forward to it. I'm just trying to sort this last bit out because one of the things we're worried about, if I can do the bus trip to Madrid and fly that way, but we need April's mother to be on a flight that's accessible for the car because that means I can check in her luggage for her. Now, the other side, it's not too bad because the Philippines are quite good in that sense. Um, they look after you. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I will say. I do find that on the Philippines side, people are very accommodating, especially for older people and stuff. Um, yeah. But anyway, be aware there's some updates coming. The books, I've actually started two books as well. Um, I started yesterday. The funny thing is I started the one and it's led to the other one getting started because there's one which I call surviving eight years, which is my eight years in the Philippines and going through the stuff I did and the stuff I developed and the things I found that worked, etc. The other one will be more going to the Philippines for the first time and what to expect. And that was because I started writing a chapter in this one and then thought, there's too much information on this, which would be more relevant on something else. So I took it out and put it to the other book. Um, but I also think that it fitted in quite well because somebody was asking me about going to the Philippines shortly after I'd mentioned it. You know, in the sense I'd written that chapter and then it's like, oh, because they're, they're worried about going to the Philippines for the first time. So I'll fill in some of these gaps. And there's a lot of people I want to meet as well. This is why. 20 questions is important. Thanks for watching.